Hey guys, Brad Fryer here with Raptor Pick Construction. I'm with Mr. John today with DD Services, and uh, he's here to talk to you about some of his equipment they installed in the house, as far as the air conditioning, and also about some uh, technology they have to kind of test the efficiencies of the house, how Raptor Pick builds it. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let, you, let him talk about the technical stuff and the reasons and why we do the things we do. So, I'll just switch baby. All right, so first off, forgive my sweat if it drips. Take into account that we're in a house that's not fully functioning. So, we're here testing the tightness of the home. Uh, we do that for two reasons. One, uh, so we can calibrate our equipment that's in the attic that breathes for the home. Uh, two, just to kind of showcase how tight of a house or how good of a house that these guys are building. Uh, energy code states that air changes per hour should be around four to five air changes per hour. Uh, We've already ran the test on this home, so I know the number. It came out to a 1.3. That means that my equipment that we install has to make up that difference there. So uh, what that kind of means is that we're exchanging the total volume of the house, you know, uh, at a certain pressure that we're running at four or five times per hour. Uh, most standard construction homes are typically eight, nine, ten air changes per hour. Uh, the new energy codes, like I said, require the four to five. And then anything below that, we actually have to make up. So, uh, yeah. John, what about in when you say energy code, who enforces those energy codes? Is it up to the builder? Or is it up to the client to educate themselves? I know, like, we're out in the rural area of Wise County and our showroom, our design center for the care. But more or less, that's uh, that's going to come from whatever municipality. Yeah. yeah, so the local municipalities handle that, uh, whether it's Dallas, and they handle the green energy building code is what Dallas uses. Uh, it's realistically, and it's up to the integrity of the builder and the contractor to really enforce it because I can hand this paper to the inspector, but most of the inspectors don't actually know what they're looking at. Right. So um, it is up to the integrity of the contractor and the builder. And I, I think that when we run this test and show the numbers, uh, I mean, that, that can really just showcase y'all's integrity on how well y'all attempt to build out. So what you're seeing is some of these barn doors, when you're looking and you're calling and you're getting those square foot crosses, you're, you're getting our budget sheets, and you're looking at our competition. This is the only type of house we're going to build. So I don't, I'm not going to build anything less than this. Uh, I'll build something better than this, but it's going to be in the finishes, not in the actual integrity and the efficiencies of it. So John, would y'all put a carrier? It's got uh, a carrier infinity green speed on here along with the ERV, which is the energy recovery middle. We had to have that because of the tightness of the home. Um, if we're not at that four to five, we use the energy recovery ventilator to bring air and exchange it. But the reason we use the ventilator instead of doing a, just a, a looser home or like a standard construction home is we're able to condition that air as we exchange it instead of it just being considered an infiltration, leaky, leakiness of the home. So we have much more control in indoor climate. So, um, Which is very important in, in, in a capsulated house that we're building. You know? yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to, you know, in this video, we're going to show you how the, the actual test when it ran, and then what we're going to do from here, we're going to take another step. We're going to go to a house that doesn't have, it was built, you know, earlier, you know, earlier 18, what, 1980s? 88. 88. So, and we're going to show you the difference between an older house and the house that we we're building. We didn't build the house we're going to see. I'm just going to show you the difference between a conventional house, with not paying attention to the energy codes versus you know, efficiency, building to the energy code. Yeah. So uh, we'll follow another uh, piece of this video and uh, talk to you from there. Today, part two, uh, we are in a house that was built in 1988. It's a conventional style house. And we did the same thing we did over in our design center Decatur. Uh, so today, John, what do we find with us with this house? Is that old? I mean, uh, we found about what we expected. We come out at 10 air changes per hour. Um, and again, like we talked about before, four to five is the target. There's definitely some efficiency to be had or to be gained from just sealing up a home. And, you know, that kind of, you know, highlights what y'all do with the foam and, and the extra sealing efforts and the way y'all build a home. You know, just it's one less thing you have to worry about, you know, long term. These, you know, so we pulled what a 10? 10, 10 air change per hour is like 9.98 to 10. Fluctuating. Okay. And we had a 1.4 over there in the we, Yeah, it was between like 1.3 and 1.4. I mean, the little small fluctuations, we don't worry about it. It's that main goal, that main so, target. Right so he's talking about that a while ago. So you pulled about a 10. So, so put it in lane in turn for everybody. 
what does that mean to people that are not in the business, don't have blower door stuff? What is the size? So if we had, we went over there with Sawzall and we cut a hole in this house, how big an air gap would that be? Yeah, so that based, we're losing? based on the square footage and the volume of the home, the machine also calculates the equivalent leakage area. That's, that's what you're talking about. If we were to cut a hole in the wall, that basically sums up all the little leaks of the home and puts them in one spot. It was basically a one foot by two foot. So that's two of those one foot square tiles that you see. You so know, two foot wide, yeah. one foot tall. So yeah. yeah, that's a that's a big area. And with yeah. we're talking indicator, that's less than what we're talking inches at that point. Yeah, we were. It was like a equivalent linkage area of like five square inches. It was really tiny, which yeah. ended up nothing around. So an energy code allows us what to four. Four to five air changes per hour, yep. And over there, like I said, we did the 1.3 to 1.4, so now we actually have to make up for it. But the benefit of us being able to make up for it versus a house that's just leaky on its own is if it's 100 degrees outside and the house is leaking, it's leaking 100 degree air. If the house is under, and it doesn't have the air change per hour that we need, and we do it mechanically, we can condition that air before we dump it in the house. So we don't have the efficiency loss of dumping in high heat uh, or cold air in the winter time, you know, we get to get to gain that efficiency back, and that's why we use those ERVs or the energy recovery ventilators. So, yeah. and that's stuff that we put in our RFP, RFP houses, and we're doing that. You know, when you're out getting quotes and you're out looking at your barn door builder or your house builders, what have you, those are the things you need to ask your builder. If he has not a clue of none of this stuff or the energy codes that we talk about in part one, part two, you probably you might want to look somewhere else because you're losing money daily when you're not trying to build towards the efficiencies that the energy codes require. Uh, so that's why we are you know establishing these videos where you know what exactly we're doing and why we're doing it and why you know our prices may seem a little bit more than everybody else but they're not. We're giving you what you're supposed to have and what you need. So uh, anything else you think we need to cover John that, or we think we covered no, I mean, there was something else that, you know, came to mind after we started talking about it. Um, by reducing that infiltration in the house, inducing that leakage, we can actually reduce the size of the air conditioner. So, um, going back to what we put in at your office up there, or that, what, the show home we're calling it, um, we put a three-ton air conditioner in there, and it was 3,000 square feet. This house is two ton, or 1,200 square feet, also has a three-ton air conditioner on it. So, you can kind of see there's again the more efficiency to be gained by just reducing the tonnage and the size right. of the equipment needed right. and, that, and that is something common that you have brought up people when we send our bids out and we're qualifying our bids and everything with our clients some you know that have a buddy or a friend that's built before and like man your air conditioner is way too small it's not and we're just building an efficient house that actually doesn't need a huge air conditioner that most houses would need because of the way we're built so I think we covered a lot. I hope this has helped you uh, understand how we build, why we build. John, thank you for coming. Yeah, no problem. And uh, so, you know, any questions you have, hit us up on Facebook. Check us out at rafterpeakconstruction.com. Don't forget to ring the bell. Burn it hot on 78s. See you soon. <laughs> I'm feeling on a dirt road.